Hello, good people. Welcome to Raw Vegan Rising. My name is Shane Sterling. How are you doing today? Thank you so much for being on this video. We're going to talk about success versus failure on a raw vegan diet. What do people need to succeed? Why do people fail? Why do so many people think that a raw vegan diet is not sustainable or not viable? Where does this come from? Well, I'm going to talk about the reasons right now. Is this what you want now? Feels like you're looking for something better. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay, the first thing I'm going to talk about is cleaning the GI tract. When we undertake a raw vegan diet, we have to clean out the GI tract one time thoroughly to ensure that our body isn't going to struggle with digestion and absorption and utilization of our food. Because if we have impacted waste in there, if we have pockets in our GI tract, if we have weakness in there, um, mucoid plaque, biofilms, hardened mucus and proteins, then we could be experiencing lack of absorption. We could be experiencing slow digestive uh, times, slow bowel transit times, which basically means that raw food is going to ferment in the gut. As we try to eat fruits and smoothies and stuff, it can't go through fast enough and then it ends up fermenting and causing gas and bloating. And then we think it's a problem with the food, when in reality it's a problem with the fact that we haven't cleaned out our GI tract. So success is going to require that we clean out the GI tract one time thoroughly. It's not something we have to always do. We don't have to constantly clean out the GI tract because once we clean out the GI tract thoroughly, we have reset the gut. Now we can rebuild on raw foods. Now we can invest in with probiotics that we make at home, enzymes, um, those are the things that I think are most important to rebuilding the gut after a juice fast. But if we never do a juice fast, if we never clean out the GI tract, if we never make any effort to change our conditions in the GI tract and we just undertake a raw vegan diet, we are absolutely going to certainly without question fail. Why is that? Because we're putting... You know, as John Rose says, we're putting new wine in an old wine skin. We got to clean things out to make room for the new diet and lifestyle. Fruits and raw foods in general need very fast bowel transit time. And if we're not giving them fast bowel transit time, they're going to ferment, cause gas, bloating, um, can also cause blood sugar problems and can cause imbalances, can cause yeasts and bacteria, overgrowths. And then we're blaming fruit for yeast problems, you know, candida or whatnot, when it's not the fruit at all. It's actually the condition of your GI tract. So we need to make sure that we are addressing the GI tract, the health of the GI tract, the cleanliness of the GI tract right off the bat. I mean, that's got to be number one. We've got to take care of the GI tract if we're going to have success. And it really determines whether we're going to have success or failure as to how we address our GI tract as we embark on a healthier diet and lifestyle. Uh, number two that I wanted to talk about was fully raw versus mostly raw. So when people think, um, you know, I'm going to take on a raw vegan diet or, you know, they get inspired about their health, they think, well, eating mostly raw is going to be healthy. And while it is true that eating more raw foods are healthy, it doesn't address the problems that we're experiencing. So if we have health problems and we come to raw food to try to heal our health problems, but we aren't really addressing the health problems specifically, then eating mostly raw isn't going to take care of it. And then we say, well, my diet isn't making a difference. What does it matter? And then we go back to having more cooked food or more junk food or whatever our comfort food is. So the difference between fully raw is success and mostly raw is going to lead to failure because mostly raw is still going to feed the imbalances in the gut. If you have pockets in the GI tract, that little bit of cooked food is going to still continue to fill those pockets. It's going to get stuck in there. The cooked food is going to get hung up on the uncleanliness in the bowels. The cooked food um, even in small quantities is still going to be constipating. It's still going to hold the digestive tra transit times back. It's still going to keep the system of the body functioning how it is. So even just a little bit of cooked food 
kind of keeps the status quo in place. When we go fully raw, that's when we disrupt the status quo, the systems of elimination start really opening up, and that allows us to cleanse, detoxify, and things move. It dislodges, you know? So eating mostly raw is like keeping things how it is, but trying it out. And it's, it's kind of like a half-assed way of doing it, you know, even though there might be some benefits to it. But if we're really committed to being successful on our raw vegan journey, we have to take it on fully at some point. We have to really say, you know, I'm going to go all in. And when we say, I'm going to go all in, that's when we're committing, not only on a psychological level um, and a physical level, but just, you know, con committing to the time it takes to get the results is not an easy thing. So we got to do that. And it it really is um, a something that requires all of us. It requires every part of us to get past this hurdle of junk food, toxicity in our body, health problems, overcoming the past, overcoming family traditions that have held us back. We have weak genes, weak kidneys, you know, maybe family, um, the family dies of cancer. We have cancer in the family. Um, boy, somebody was just telling me today how they have, you know, one side of their family died from cancer and the other side of their family died of diabetes. So these are the things that it takes commitment to. If we just eat mostly raw, it's never going to disrupt the patterns that are already in place that are leading to cancer and diabetes. You know what I'm saying? So it's really like fully raw is going to be the success path. Mostly raw is just a downward slope of continuing on with being half-assed and not sure, not, you know, being definitive about it. So we got to just make a decision and create that dividing line in our own life, in our own consciousness that, yes, this is something I'm going to do, okay? The third thing I wanted to mention was having a big why. People who are successful on a raw vegan diet have a big why. They know why they're doing it. They're clear on their vision. They're clear on their mission. They know what they're taking a stand for, you know, and people who never think about the big why or aren't hooked into that vision will most certainly fail. They are the people that are going to say, well, I tried it for a while and it didn't really do this or that, or I went back and I craved, you know, I can't, I talk to people every day who say that I want to quit caffeine, but I keep going back. I want to quit meat and dairy and eggs, but I keep going back. I want to quit junk food and processed refined foods and sugar, but I keep going back. Why is that? I mean, we could say we have cravings. We could say we have we have to do a cleanse. We could say all these reasons why, but it really comes down to what is your vision? What is the mission you are on in your life? If you've got a big mission, it doesn't matter what stops you. It doesn't matter what is in your way. You're going to overcome the things that are stopping you. You're going to overcome the hurdles, the setbacks. No matter how many setbacks, you're going to keep getting up and keep going after it. Like me in my life, my mission is helping the planet, helping the animals, speaking about veganism, helping people understand the empowerment that you get from eating a whole food diet, a raw food diet, and where that empowerment can lead us, like in terms of our spiritual growth, our purpose and mission being coming clear to us, service oriented to others, helping others, reaching out speaking our, you know, developing our voice and speaking. Do you think I used to talk like this? Hell no. I used to be afraid of starting my YouTube channel. was for years, but I've, I got hooked into my vision. And then starting a YouTube channel and developing my voice was the least concern. It was the smallest little hurdle. Now I've had much bigger hurdles, you know what I mean? To get my message out and to be in service to what I think is the purpose of of why I'm here on this planet. So when you hook into your bigger why, it is going to change everything. And it is the difference between success versus failure. Uh, the fourth thing I wanted to talk about is calories. Okay, having enough calories on a raw vegan diet is going to ensure success. Having too few calories or not paying attention to calories and just eating intuitively is going to ensure failure. We need to make sure we are having enough calories and what comes with calories, but volume. 
So a lot of us are not used to the volume of raw food. In fact, I just read an article recently about how our jaw has shrunk, which is why our wisdom teeth don't fit in our jaw because we don't chew anymore how we're designed to chew. We're designed for large amounts of fiber in our diet. And so we don't eat any fiber anymore. In fact, the current paleo diet is still only 25% of what would be considered uh, the amount of fiber our ancestors ate. So we're consuming a tiny, tiny amount of fiber, but not for raw vegans because we eat fiber all day. So my hydrochloric acid in my stomach is high. My digestive system is high. The muscles in my digestive system, my ability to digest is high. I can eat like a horse and I can process all that fiber. So with that volume comes calories and we can ensure that we are on the success path. But we can't just eat intuitively. We can't eat, leave it to default. That's why we have to operate within a very specific set of parameters that gets us the result. So if we want freedom in life, we have to follow a plan and a set of parameters. Freedom isn't from having no structure and no parameters. That's called crazy making and we have nothing. And then we're in poverty, we have poor health, and we have bad relationships, and we're just, you know, running crazy in this society. But the second we bring in structure, money follows a plan, health follows a plan, love relationships follow a plan. Okay. And so when we invest into understanding how to operate within the plan, we get the results. Calories are exactly that. We need to make sure we're getting enough calories. If that means tracking calories, downloading chronometer into your smartphone and tracking your diary of what you're eating to make sure you're getting enough calories. And you might go, wow, that's a lot of volume, but you adjust. But people who never take that on are going to fail. All right. Another thing on my list, number five is fat. People who stay consistently low fat over time are going to fail, you know, and maybe somebody has enough willpower to stick to low fat forever. But man, that's no fun. That's not me. I say eat the fats, eat lots of fat. In fact, all the macronutrients are wonderful and shouldn't be avoided. They are not, they are not here to hurt you. Protein isn't going to damage your kidneys. Protein is not bad. Fat is not bad. Carbohydrates are not bad. None of them are bad. Any diet that says a macronutrient is bad is bad. That's a ridiculous claim and it's just not true and it's a, and it's a path to failure. We need to embrace carbs, we need to embrace fats, and we need to embrace proteins in whole raw food sources only. Um, so I definitely do not think that animal source fats are good for us or proteins good for us. So when I say embrace the fats and the proteins, I'm talking whole food plant-based sources that are raw and undenatured. So fats, we got avocados, we got nuts, we got seeds. I love fermenting fats, making cashew cheese, making almond yogurt, making coconut yogurt. When we ferment the fats and we culture them with enzymes and probiotics, we are creating a plethora of probiotic and enzyme food, rich foods for our body, but also pre-digesting those fats. It makes those lipids so easy to process and digest. So there's no reason to struggle by eating whole unsoaked nuts or unprocessed nuts. And then we get digestive issues and gas and bloating. And we're trying to eat fruit and salad and nuts and we get all these problems. There's no reason to do any of that. Pre-digest your fats consume all the fats you want within reason. You know, obviously we can't overeat any one macronutrient, but we can't undereat any macronutrient. So there's a lot of stigma, a lot of dogma in the raw food world that we should be low fat, 80, 10, 10, um, all that stuff, which is great for cleansing. It's great for reducing uh, inflammation cleaning out the bowels, great for reducing disease in the body, reversing disease. High fruit, low fat is exceptionally good for periods of time to get over the hurdle. I was low fat raw vegan for one and a half years to heal up my seborrheic dermatitis uh, skin problem that I had, and it worked. But that's not a maintenance diet. So we have to understand that a long-term successful raw vegan maintenance diet is going to have a macro balance that is 
including fats, proteins, and carbs. I just don't see it any other way. I don't think we're going to be successful on a raw vegan diet trying to be low fat forever. Then we have cravings. Then we binge. And then we might go back to junk food and animal products because we are not happy and we are not satisfied. So the trick is to be completely satisfied with every area of our life, every area of our diet, every macro nutrient. We should be satisfied with all of the fats, all of the proteins, all of the carbs. That's how I see it. The last on my list, number six, is exercise. People and raw vegans need to exercise in general. We know that. Use it or lose it, people. But seriously, if we're going on a raw vegan journey, all the more reason to exercise because then we stimulate the hormones, we stimulate the muscles, we can stimulate muscle protein synthesis by just giving our muscles a little stimulation, putting ourselves under load, lifting a little weight, um, you know, stimulating the lymphatic system by running or jogging, all that's exceptionally good. And when we combine exercise with healthy food and a healthy diet, then we excel. Then we have success. But if we continually cleanse or fast or struggle with our health and we never take on exercise as part of our success plan, then we fall off. We fail. We're going to fail. Being sedentary is a recipe for failure. Not exercising as a raw vegan is a recipe for failure. We have to exercise at least small amounts to keep the body functioning properly. Use it or lose it, right? So using the body means treating the body well and putting it under stimulation, you know, and talk about the ancestors in the paleo, we would be walking long distances, we would be lifting heavy things all the time. It's just part of how our body is designed. And um, it's also said that we lose um, you know, a lot of muscle mass over the, as we age. I don't, I don't remember what the percentage is, but we lose a lot of muscle mass as we age. And so to maintain that muscle mass well into old age and to look good and to feel good and to feel strong, we need to make sure we retain our muscle mass, which means lifting weight, putting our muscles under resistance, you know. The other advantage to um, resistance training with weight is that the more muscle mass we have, the stronger our metabolism is, the more capable our body is at producing the hormones it needs, like testosterone, for instance, for men, or whatever the hormones our body needs, serotonin levels. When we work out, when we exercise, we increase serotonin, we increase melatonin, and so then we're going to feel good, and we're going to feel, um, you know, we're going to have the, the mood that we need to be successful, okay? And without that, it's certain depression and failure. I mean, so there it is, people. There it is. Those are six important reasons and the difference between success versus failure on a raw vegan diet. So I hope that was helpful. I also wanted to talk about my group coaching program called Raw Vegan Heroes. If you need more support in your life to become a raw vegan, if you need more success and help getting there, then I've developed this membership to be part of to help you do that. Because not only do you get coaching with me in a group setting, but you get all the camaraderie and the friendships that go along with being in a community. And so the community can provide information and knowledge you know, and I'm there to provide the culture of the community and steer it in the right direction and make sure everybody's getting the right information. But ultimately, being in community is how we get success. We have to realize that who is influencing our mind is the results we're going to get in life. And who we spend the most time with is the results we're going to get in life. So if we want to make more money, if we want to have better health, if we want to have better love relationships, we have to invest into someone who's influencing our mind in a way that's different than the results that you're getting. So if everyone around you is broke, you need to surround yourself by people who aren't broke, okay? If you wanna make a million dollars, you gotta surround yourself by people who are making a million dollars. Then you're gonna naturally learn how to do it because it's gonna rub off on you. Well, the same goes for our health. If you want to be a raw vegan, if you want to be successful on your health journey, be around others who are successful on their health journey. 
join my community and I will support you on your journey. I would love to do it. So the link is in the description below. Check it out, rawveganrising.com slash membership. I'd love to have you along on the journey with me. So thank you so much for being on this video. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this content, if this is helpful and valuable to you. Also, please subscribe to Raw Vegan Rising. I'd love to have you along on my journey. You know, so subscribe to my channel. Much love to all of you. Blessings. I will see you in the next one. Is this what you want now? Feels like you're looking for something.